Namaste. Thank you so much for the wonderful uh, uh, welcome and the introduction given by Parnaviji. Very happy to learn about the activities of UR Germany. And such a pleasure and a delight to know that Swamiji's birthday in different ways is being celebrated in different parts of the country by young people. Uh, like in the introduction when Parnavi said about how what Vivekananda uh, how much of confidence he had in the youth of this country. Uh, his confidence is reflected in the statement that, you know, like, give me a handful of young men and women. And the man's confidence is so much, he didn't say, I will change India. He said, give me a handful of young men and women, and I will change the world. And with that kind of a conviction, uh, we, uh, we owe a lot to Swami Vivekananda. I begin uh, my talk, especially when you're in a foreign land, I understand that being so far away amidst this enormously challenging crisis of COVID, you would have your own uh, pressures, whether it's academic pressures, whether it is pressures of family and their welfare, your own safety and health. So several years ago, uh, when I was talking to young people, this happened in the US. One of my students said, oh, professor, you know what? Please let us help us understand how to live in a VUCA world. And since I, that is a word which was not familiar to people of my generation, I didn't know what was VUCA. And I went back, I, I was too embarrassed to ask my student, what did it mean at that moment of time? So I went back and started looking at usually the greatest professor of our times, Google. And then I realized it was an acronym. And I really felt that, do we really have such a world? Is it is it as volatile, as uncertain, as as complex and ambiguous as we all make it out to be? Or is it just an acronym that young people keep, like under word, like dude, and something else that many of you use? I thought maybe, is it just a word thrown around or is it really true? And then COVID happened. Then I realized the kind of pressures people went through, young people and people with unsure of what the future is going to be, the challenges of education, the challenges of employment, the challenges of suddenly coping in a world which you're not prepared for. That's when it hit me that we've all been investing so much of energy, so much of effort on preparing our young people with enormous competence that we have forgotten to teach you how to survive in a world without competence. You know, we are thought we are all been so focusing on helping you learn in universities and colleges how to operate from zones of your competence I know several of you might be people, computer science background, engineers, doctors, different kind of membership you might have amongst you are Germany. And if you approach somebody with the competence that they have, they'll flourish. You ask an young man about social media and its management, he'll possibly at eight or nine, he'll lecture to you, which a man of my age wouldn't figure out what it is. Or the world of artificial intelligence, machine learning and data management, big data sets and stuff like that. But you suddenly ask them, how do you how do you live in a world which is just struggling with COVID? And they're confused. Because the tools that they have is suddenly inadequate. And if for, for a minute you all understand that is when the vulnerability of today's generation gets manifested in complete starkness. And I was looking back and asking myself, is there something that we could have done differently? Or is there something that we can start doing today? So that our young people don't face this kind of a tremendously vulnerable situation, or at least they understand and develop the courage to live up to the situation by dealing with their vulnerability in a better way. I'm, I'm, you can never say you'll never be vulnerable. And as I started thinking about it, I realized the answer is there right in front of us. It is just that we haven't decoded that answer because the beauty of the Indian civilizational thought had prepared a generation of people, thousands and thousands and thousands of people over the last several hundreds of years to actually f exactly face and deal with such situations. But we never thought of it that way. We never really understood the way the foundational philosophies of this great country of ours so beautifully encapsulated in, in, in such a fascinatingly prosaic, prosaic form and sometimes even poetry form by Swami Vivekananda that we never really decoded what he said that is when I remembered 
uh, something which um, happened to me a few years ago when I was spending some time at Harvard. Uh, and uh, I used to frequent the Boston Ramakrishna Mission, though it's called the Vedanta Societies, as many, several of you know, outside this country. And I met a lady, a very elderly person called Elena Stark. And she gifted me her book. And the book was titled, very fascinating title. That's what actually attracted me to read the book a little later. It was titled, The Gift Unopened. And I was wondering, what is this, a gift unopened? And then I suddenly remembered most of us, you know, at least uh, so, so many of you would have been to the US. I'm not sure what the tradition in Germany is. When you give somebody a gift, the first thing they do is open it in your presence itself. And in India, if you were to do that, you would be embarrassed. Like, but this guy can't even wait to go home. He's opening the gift in front of you. But that's a sort of the cultural norm in the United States. But I actually just opened it a bit. And then I thought my Indianness took over. I thought, let me go back to my room and open it. Strangely, I forgot that gift, you know, the pressure of work and so many other things, you just forget everything. And then I came back to India and a few years later, I suddenly remembered that I haven't read that book. And when I opened it out, I was fascinated to see a picture of Swami Vivekananda on the, on the front page, on the front cover of the book. The cover itself said that. And I got curious. Now I got really curious and I couldn't put the book down. That's when I realized Elena Stark was a historian who had moved as a very young person to the United States during the Holocaust time. And then after a few years, she got into historical research and her research was to track the American history. And while tracking American history, she realized something had happened in the 1890s in the United States, which changed the entire historical narrative of the United States. And she had not heard of Vivekananda or Advaita or Vedanta or any of those concepts. And as she started going deeper and deeper and trying to find patterns of change, and she came into understanding what Chicago meant in the entire struggle and the entire travel path of Swami Vivekananda in the United States and the second visit and stuff like that. And she realized Vivekananda had come into the United States like a tornado or a volcano and they swept the entire country. And, and she says, I, I quote her, it's a fascinating sentence. She says in her book, if Columbus can be credited with discovering the land of America. It was Swami Vivekananda who gave it her soul. And then she goes on to write, the people of the United States haven't yet realized this extraordinary gift that God has sent to the United States of America. And we still haven't opened him. She said, it's a gift unopened. And if the United States were to open the gift called Swami Vivekananda, she says, there's no holding her back. And if you look today, I think, United States needs Swami Vivekananda and this message a lot more than any other country right now. And look at India. Sometimes I feel, even in India, we haven't opened the gift called Vivekananda completely. So Vivekananda is a difficult person to understand. I think mine in his own way, but very simple in his own way. If you can love this country, if you can love the people that Swamiji wanted to give his life for, the masses as he called it, then I think your journey of discovering Vivekananda has begun. So when I saw this title from Yuva Germany about Swami Vivekananda and Swami Vivekananda, students and Swami Vivekananda, I spent a lot of time thinking, why didn't they say Swami Vivekananda and students? Why begin with saying students and Swami Vivekananda? Then I realized there's something which is, uh, something in this title. So I thought I was trying to figure out, is it simply just a play of words? It's just words mithi that I say Swami Vivekananda first and the students next. Then I realized maybe the constant is Swami Vivekananda, but students are changing over time, generational shifts and attitudes, etc. But it is each generation possibly interprets and understands Swami Vivekananda differently from their own lenses. So, as an young person today, as an young man or woman today, how would it be in a post COVID world that you would see Vivekananda? Would it be the same way as I might have seen him 30, 35 years ago? Would I in my own way, get a message which is different from the message that you would see today. So what, how does he, is he even relevant to this conversation? Is it just emotional romanticism that makes us celebrate it, celebrate him and his teachings or something deeper? And then I realized possibly the real medicine for the VUCA world of today, the medicine for dealing with the COVID and the post-COVID scenario, the medicine which can empower the end today to face up to life's challenges as we're seeing it, 
is possibly Swami Vivekananda. And the greatest gift all of you can unpack, open up, is Swamiji and his message. And as a student, there is no greater time than being a student. The fun, the pleasure, the privilege, and the freedom that you have. Freedom, not just physically, the intellectual freedom that you all enjoy. The, the spaces in which you can today explore the world of information, technology at your fingertips, the amount of abilities each of you can command, and the extraordinary confidence sometimes many of you reflect. I think you can't have a greater opportunity than what exists today. And unless you have a challenge like COVID, the opportunity to manifest this inner potential would not have been there. So I believe you're all presented not with volatility, uncertainty, and complexity as the world understands it or as the Western world describes it, but as a in a different lens, it's an extraordinary opportunity for you to take this message of Vedanta to the world. Vedanta not in the way in which we understood it in the past, not in the way where information was just kept to the powerful to be used in a transactional way, but in the way Swami Vivekananda brought it to this world. And he coined the word practical Vedanta not the dry jargon that we thought Vedanta is, but the way a lived experience. And that is how I think students and Swami Vivekananda are interconnected because his message would resonate with every one of you, not just from a spiritual or a philosophical sense, but from an everyday existential sense. What do I mean by this? How would I even understand and unpack Swamiji the way we can all try together to do now? is in a very simplistic way, for the first time, somebody stood up to the world and proclaimed that religion is not just sitting in a temple, church or mosque and thinking about God. For the first time, somebody had the courage to tell, if you can't see God in man, you're as good as an atheist. You know, look at the power of the message during a time when India was being ruled politically by the British. We had come to believe that we are subservient. We had come to believe we are just natives without even a mind of our own, he had to shake this generation, wake us up and tell us that you're special. He said, how can you call somebody a sinner at a time when the country was ruled by people who belong to the religion, who believed in heaven, hell and sinners. He said to call man a sinner is blasphemy. See the divinity in every man. And he brought out this possibly the best definition I can understand about education. He said education is the manifestation of the perfection already inherited in man. And today, my friends, it's an extraordinary opportunity for each one of you to demonstrate this perfection and see how that perfection would look like. Is perfection a perfect A plus in every course you take? Is perfection completing your doctoral program, postdoctoral programs in the shortest possible time, getting the best possible job, earning the highest possible salary? Is that perfection? I would say, well, it's a very limited understanding of perfection. I'm not saying it's not perfection, but there's something far deeper in the perfection Swamiji meant. And that is where he gives us a window of understanding, an opportunity to unpack this. Let's look at how we're all been transacting in this world. We're all been transacting by acquiring information. And Swamiji said, information cannot run riot in your brains. If information was what people wanted, the libraries would have been the best storehouses of knowledge, he said. But then, as students, we need to understand, you need information. Because asymmetry of information will be asymmetry of power. You want to survive in this world, you got to be the best in whatever professions you choose, whatever it is. So Swamiji gave the secret and said, there are two things in education. The first is control of external nature and understanding what it is. The second and the more significant and the more deeper and the more difficult and what is missing from educational systems around the world is a control of internal nature. Look at the brilliance of that man. He said, what we are all learning and learning to do well as students is controlling external nature. Whether you understand computers or you understand the word of metallurgy or understand medicine, everything's about the outside. But look at the power and potentiality if you understand control of internal nature. If external nature gives you the skill sets you have to survive in this world, it is internal nature which will help you unable to kickstart the journey to acquire your mindset a mindset which reflects confidence, a mindset which reflects conviction, a mindset which shows the courage to live this conviction and to understand that deep inside you is that enormous dynamo of power driven by the belief that you are the divine. 
and that is what students of today need what you need is not just the learning that you acquire in the outside world but what you need is the ability to learn how to learn itself and that can come from the inside of you each one of you and that is what possibly vivekananda meant as a manifestation of the inner perfection the inner potential that each of us can show to the outside world and how would this young student look like you know if i were to describe as somebody who is really inspired by this great message of swami ji i think it can be encapsulated in just four d's the first d is the discipline to lead a student's life and vivekananda speaks about it a lot in several parts of his works whether it's portions of the raja yoga or parts of the karma yoga or in several different other places that he talks about education he stresses on the fact on two things discipline and concentration and concentration is a consequence of the discipline that you reflect in life the simple managing of your heart body mind and soul the emotions you show the cognitive attainment that you can demonstrate and and most importantly the fact that you can actually be balanced in your way you look at the world the mind and the meditation the powers of meditation that he talks about today we don't really stress on all this many of you might have been products of our best institutions from india whether the indians of technology the indians of science the iims and all those great institutions that we have in this country and from your seventh grade eighth grade parents dream is to see you there and they constantly prepare you to such an extent that they destroy children's childhood today without recognizing they're preparing them for the external nature and the entire journey of discovering their internal nature is lost and that is why to me when organizations like you are germany come together to talk about not just the food fun and the flavor of it and so beautifully expressed vishnu prakash ji about the mantan chintan and all the bitex that you do i think those are opportunities to kick start your thinking for what this is that you need to do to change your mindsets and how do you build that capacity to build that mindset so deter- discipline is something which he spoke about the next d is determination i am determined to achieve what i want to achieve that kind of fire that kind of energy he said only the youth can have he even says it not when you are worn out and jaded but when you are young and full of energy so the determination you can show at this stage of your life is far excess of what it might be later on yes inspired by vivekananda most of us will be young for life that youthful energy is what some of you wanted not just the chronological youth of what we all understand youth as but that spirit and energy that he said that endows you with extraordinary determination the next he said was today many of you i find you know society is going through an enormous crisis we all know it's going through an ecological crisis all of us know that we all know it's going through crisis of enormous inequities look at the entire covid situation just two people in this world have made more wealth than the rest of the world itself putting elon musk and jeff jeff bezos together the amount they just made 67 billion dollars just during the covid time when th- thousands of migrants in this country had no jobs and no second meal a day it's filthy to even think that somebody can generate that kind of wealth but i'm not saying they shouldn't be making the wealth but i'm concerned about those who left out the the the, the masses which swami vivekananda spoke about and you look at you know it's so difficult not to get sucked into the iniquities but more dangerous thing and that's where we need vivekananda as young people it is the crisis of the self the, the enormous crisis many of our young people go through today you know none of us actually think about it around the world close to a million young people less than the age of 25 to 30 commit suicide every year how can the world lose such a wonderful potential such great extraordinary possibilities by just getting them to snuff, snuff out their own lives and these are the reasons why we need the four d's as some of us spoke about to break the cycle of the crisis of the self and bring out that inner self outside so discipline determination the dispassion that you need to generate but we have le- we have to learn to be dispassionate learn to be the sita prajnas of the the bhagavad gita teaches us equanimity in every sense of the world and the last d as a student and you have to cultivate this is discrimination your ability to discriminate the real from the unreal your ability to discriminate what matters to india and what does not what you know even today like even ability to discriminate the real from the fake whether it is media stories whether it's messaging all this we all need the ability to discriminate so and if you really have to understand vivekananda as a student these are the four qualities that come out extremely powerfully 
and how would that student actually look like you know in a simple way somebody said the entire objective of education we all think is a great, great you know uh, build this, this this new generation of people who will change the way the world operates and we think it's only the whatsapps and the social medias and the uh, retail marketing on businesses etc which can change it but what we have not figured out is a much much more deeper way of understanding this so in a, in, a, in a, you know i remember several years ago and i wouldn't like to mention the name of the institution a very well known ivy league whose numbers are always the best university second best third best you know the top 5 universities of the world suddenly thought about this experiment they wanted to understand who what happens to their students who go out into this world considered to be one of the best universities in the world and if the students are graduating from that schools and colleges of that university what do they do what what how do they lead their lives and they actually chose the sample from the uh, population of students who joined them as an undergrad student spent four years of undergrad education possibly do two years of graduate program with there itself and maybe a five to seven year doctoral program the doctoral program would vary right in this institution the average doctoral time was seven years so a student who comes in at 16 or 17 17 or 18 and then takes 12 to 13 years to get out at 30 or 31 he gets out enters the real world as we know it they wanted to figure out what happens to him what is his contribution to this world any 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 guess what percentage of this people percentage of the students who graduate from there after 12 to 13 years of the best college education they could ever get possibly one of the most expensive in the world too actually end up being useful and productive for this world actually end up being called successful and the metrics of success they said was excellence in every human endeavor money name fame visibility all the traditional westernized notions of success and i know all of you are on mute and you may not be able to answer so i'll myself tell the answer they found less than 4% of students after investment of 12 to 13 years one of the best educational institutions in the world as a student actually end up being successful so if so does it mean that we shouldn't even get those kind of education so should we just say goodbye to our student lives and then go do what we want to do or is there something else at begin another university had another brilliant idea when they this research was not really published because it's not useful publishing just things and you'll have no students especially nowadays when brick and mortar institutions are being questioned when there are other options to acquire knowledge and information universities would not like such papers to get published this is not 20 25 years ago the study another university did a different kind of a study they said well in so asking ourselves the question how many succeed let us take all the successful people in the world as we know it successful businessmen successful academicians successful politicians nobel laureates whatever you choose to be called success as different human endeavors and find out do they have any common qualities amongst them anything that is significantly visible which is common and if we can train our students in our universities to get those qualities possibly that's the way to make them successful and my friends western research validated what india has known for thousands of years the the distilled out knowledge from our upanishads the distilled out knowledge from avedas as propounded so beautifully by swami vivekananda and i i have done some years of work on this there are eight basic qualities that you can extract from swami ji's message and swami ji's message is eternal it's vedantic it is the crystallization of vedantic messages expressed in a beautifully understandable manner for all of us in our generation four of this is what that western research pointed out but india has got four more and before the western world says it is theirs i can give you an example 1997 98 was the first time swami vivekananda used the word servant based leadership for the first time in a recorded in in the english language in a recorded statement was by swami vivekananda in the 60s harvard published a paper on servant based leadership and everybody thinks everybody thinks that servant based leadership emerged from harvard in the 30s greenleaf wrote a book on servant based leadership though it is not very popular so who even coined the word first how many of us even credit vivekananda to that we simply think it's a westernized notion but even these four qualities the research of the western world tells it but those are values that have been expressed so beautifully in our country and it is time for students like you not only to live and understand this message but propagate this message that is when our country can become the vishwaguru that vivekananda wanted
what are those four things they discovered and then four more i'll tell all the eight together the first thing is compassion what the world needs today is compassion and as students this is the best time to begin because at that age you're all very compassionate competition doesn't destroy the compassion within each of you life in a very competitive space over time destroys it even if you have to compete remember to compete collaboratively and that's a very very deep understanding of what spirituality is the second quality is faith and hope enormous faith in yourself vivekananda says if you don't have faith in yourself but you have faith in all the 33000 crore gods that we in india worship you're still an atheist it's of no use faith in yourself is what he asked generate that faith saying that i can do this i can do extraordinary work i'm enormously capable there's inner divinity in me which propels me to do what i have to do and hope that the future is going to be greater than what we saw you're not sitting back with your head in your hands and saying oh my god the world is bleak but saying that this is an opportunity covid presents a great opportunity for me to understand how can i excel even in these situations and hope that tomorrow is going to be better the third quality that came out so beautifully from vivekananda's message the spirit of positivism for vivekananda everything was positive nothing negative the way he described everything he used to get angry when somebody used to be negative so generate today there is so much of research about the science of positivism we talk about it as though it's something discovered today but let's understand the power of positivism is a vedantic quality described in the upanishads fourth is a sense of humor we need to learn to laugh too being student is not some mean that simply with your books all the time and laughing is not at people that is not the laughter we in india laugh it is learning to laugh with people and that's a quality the world needs to understand today laughing at our own weaknesses laughing with people looking at the world that it is the way it is today and not trying to put down anybody that sense of humor sense of spirit of service you know we talk of seva you can't even get a equivalent english word for seva in in, in english you can say helping somebody but seva is not help so even service is an inadequate description seva is something which is a deep mindset in the way you perform the service and how is it tommy ji said he said shiva gnane jeeva seva knowledge of god through service of man using the opportunity of serving man as an opportunity to evolve your own inner spiritual self seeing god in every person and seeing the worship of man as an opportunity to serve the god can we do it and in that space of oneness experiencing the advaitic feeling of the non non dual state this is what vivekananda meant and that's an extraordinary sense of spirit of service next thing swami ji told us that spirituality is not going to the himalayas and sitting in a cave doing japa there in a very simplistic way he said start practicing the science, the spirit of self inquiry who am i what am i doing why am i in germany why am i studying this particular course what is the future hold for the world for me as part of this world how do i negotiate with what's happening around me asking existential questions living in self doubt but not being cowed down by it but demonstrating exemplary confidence in looking for those answers so exploring answers courageously in a constant mindset of experimentation is what vivekananda said is a journey of self inquiry in one sentence ramana maharishi captured it so beautifully and said just live with one question all your life who am i am i parnavi as i know it am i this body as a woman am i shiv prakash as i know it as if the body of a man with a long beard is it something else who am i the simple question and that's exactly how do we need to ask, begin a journey of understanding ourselves that is the internal nature i spoke about and the last is last two is the next thing swami ji said is fearlessness he said abhi 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 the most powerful vedic message we can give to the world fear the western psychologists understand courage courage is your ability to cope with your fears but we in india go beyond courage we talk of fearlessness transcending the very notion and concept of fear itself this is the message vivekananda gave to young people today this is a message students need to carry forth in their hearts fearlessness i'm sure all of you are going through an enormous phase of fear and uncertainty but you're also coping with it go beyond coping and learn to transcend fear itself that is the message of uh, swami ji you can all demonstrate to students and the last is mindfulness constantly being intensely self aware 
ask yourself am i constantly being mindful about am i really compassionate am i having the faith am i having the hope am i practicing self inquiry am i transacting in a world where help is very transactional with an expectational outcome or is it completely with the spirit of serving god in man so asking this question and being mindful about it is what our extraordinary qualities so i would say in conclusion these are qualities which you can you know, distill out from some of this message qualities with the next generation need to build themselves up with qualities that the world is desperately hungry for not just the students of india and germany but every young man in the world today what look at the power and potential of india's youth close to 80% of all of you are less than 40 years today 59 to 60% of indians are less than 20 we cannot get a better opportunity than the enormous demographic dividend we are enjoying today don't make it waste go to waste let's all join hands celebrate this message of swami vivekananda not by just remembering an on youth day celebration and then going back to life as we all know it but living this message every day living this message as part of a lifestyle living this message as a message to the rest of this world no no the, the universalism that he spoke about enormous tolerance that he displayed and the deep conviction everything hindu at the same time having the courage to say i am proud to be a hindu but also saying that everybody is to be in his own place this kind of thought is what the world which is so polarized so filled with hatred and negativism needs today and if we can take this message around the world that is a message of jagat guru that swami ji dreamt about he spoke about mother india sitting on a throne resplendent in her beauty crowned with all the work of the young people of this country and that is the mother india we need to build in a non romanticized way in a non emotional way in a way in which we can be proud of ourselves and of this great civilizational um, contribution that we have made to the rest of the world we need to get back a resurgence of those indian ideas because the world needs it and there cannot be any greater ambassadors than young students around the world indian students have occupied possibly every major university in the world today and if you can take these ideas powerfully across beyond your physics chemistry maths computer science and medicine that, that's important too but beyond that this message that the inner power and potential of mankind is far more greater and stronger and that is the power that the world desperately needs today if you can create a generation of leaders who believe in that with the conviction then we in india can say the gift called vivekananda has truly started to open out what we need is every one of you to awaken the swami vivekananda hidden in each of you the real inner potential a student can explore and discover and bring out and manifest is a message of swami vivekananda that is lurking inside you bring it out express it shape this country shape yourself and shape the whole world itself thank you all so much for inviting me here allowing me to share some of my thoughts Swami ji is somebody which I can keep talking about for days together, and I can pause here for some time. If there are any questions that you would like me to take, I am sure one of the organizers can curate and ask me those questions. I'd be happy to answer for a few minutes. Thank you all again. Namaste.